Hi, everybody. We're Rob and Leslie Hildebrand. Welcome to the Chateau de la Griffre. Three years ago, we sold or mortgaged everything we had to buy this beautiful chateau. With the hope that we could create a special place of learning for young people to learn about their world and themselves. It's been an amazing adventure so far with so much more to come. So come along with us as we wake this sleeping beauty and restore her to her former glory. Hi, friends. Uh, welcome to the Chateau de la Griffre. Uh, this is season five, episode 15. Uh, I haven't named it yet, so we'll see what the name is. Um, it's just Rob. Where's Leslie? Oh, Leslie's tired. We're both tired. Uh, today felt like, um, uh, the, this week has felt like a month in the very best way. We've gotten so much done, and this video is chock full. I'm not sure if we're going to do it all in one shot or if we're going to break it into two. Uh, but in the next um, week's video you're going to see us uh, complete the wallpaper to the main floor guest, main floor guest room, which is right uh, right there. And also lighting and painting. So that's that's uh, looking beautiful. Uh, we have some friends coming. We've had very little family able to come to France and enjoy this. And we had my uncle Glenn and some of his friends come, uh, which is very exciting. And so they've been helping us out the past few days, uh, rescue the rhododendrons and take care of some of our uh, dead trees that have fallen as well as some of our park benches. So that's exciting. Uh, also, I finally got the courage to go on the roof. I went on the roof and it was amazing. And so I've got some, um, you know, I was looking at the apocalypse, the apocalypse drain pipe, and I actually put a camera through it. And so we got some really interesting footage, I think. And uh, so it's a good, it's a good video. You've chosen a good one to watch and uh, we hope you're having a great time. Uh, enjoy. New week. Let's get going, Mr. Bingley. Let's get going. He says, you don't have to tell me twice. I will run. He's going to run off to his corner, I bet you. He always runs to the right, into that area right there. There he goes. I don't know if it's bunnies, lapin, or what's going on, but he's go he goes to check somebody out. Okay, new week. Got some sun. It's time to hit it. It's time to hit it slowly over we're going to our main floor guest room yes we are time to get back to the wallpaper i'm starting up there it's going to be tricky going around those corners it's really coming along isn't it and leslie's been continuing it's great she, she we both work on the wallpaper together and then once uh, we get it on i start touching cutting all the edges and then she goes back to painting so she's painting the inside and the outside of the shutters. Looking good, looking good, we're pleased with it. And it's going on well too. We had some, some difficulty coming around the back corner there because we, you know, you've got one corner here, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six. So that's a lot of corners and they're not, they're not all a plumb or they're not even. It's an old building, right? So it's difficult to wallpaper around corners that aren't straight. So we've had to make a couple of corrections in, 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 in the inside corners, but you know, honestly, you can't really see them. Like the worst one's over here. And can you see it? Not really. I mean, you, if you look, you can see it, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Got the lights back up and uh, coming around the corner, just at the last little bit, maybe one day here, and we'll get this finished up. This, this will start right here today. Do that little area. You can tell Leslie's been doing a ton of painting as well. You can see that's the one area not painted. What a difference little paint makes, eh? When you're learning like we are, it's not uncommon to make mistakes. And we certainly made one mistake as I was uh, uh, charting how far it would come across. We ended a seam right here. Now the seam looks pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, but I was nervous as anything that it wasn't going to stay down. We're fortunate that it did. Um, this is just the wood. You can see that line. That's just the wood. It's the wall. There's nothing you can do with that. But no, it's looking great. It's looking great. The uh, it's interesting when you look here. You're seeing the shadow. Like for example, you see the shadow right there. That's from the ladder. Uh, in person, it, it looks a lot better. It looks. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe when we get everything out of here and get all the lights on and stuff, you'll see it better. So you found some wallpaper, or you found some curtains. Well, I, I don't know. I'm in the process. In the perfect world, I would be back in the States where I have showrooms <laughs> and have myriads of fabric samples. Um, and in my world, uh, no, there's never
give her enough samples. So here it's hard. I don't have a drapery place yet, and I don't think our budget allows for it. These windows are like, the curtains would itself would be like 420 centimeters um, for these two big windows, and the other one is a little shorter. Um, so this is a lot of yardage, it's a lot of fabric. So I've been really trying to find something that would still look nice, but I could just get made online um, on a custom kind of site um, that hopefully saves some money and time. But boy, there's not a lot of options over here. Okay, so, so budget, best budget for three the three the three window curtains. What's the best best you think we're gonna do for finances? I think the best we're gonna do would be like Fifteen hundred or two thousand for all three. If you had a customer in the states, how much would they pay for these windows? Oh man, depends how nice the fabric we choose. Yeah. Let's say um, one of your but, one of your uh, one of your better to do customers. Well, it would probably be like three thousand or more a window. Per window, yeah. Mm -hmm. So nine thousand. So. All right. Well, we'll see. We're debating it. It's obviously it'd be nice to finish these, but you don't want to. You have to be careful with your pennies. Well, I know, but the, we even inherited the amazing curtain rods, so it just mm -hmm. seems wrong to have these great curtain rods just sitting there with no. nothing. Um, like so it. we'll do our best. The color comes from the birds? Color comes from the birds, yeah. It's that or we go neutral and then I can move the curtains other places if we need it. No. Wallpapering done. And Leslie's painting, and more accurately, and I'll come and take a look. Scraping. Yeah, there's just so many holes in the between the glass and the trim that I try to shove it with paint. Let's see. If, can you scrape, or you can't reach more? No, oh, I can try. Oh yeah. See how nicely that comes up. Yeah, perfect. So I tend to just uh, go over the top and then scrape it after. Yeah, it's easier to go. Room looks great. Room looks great. Okay, we don't do a lot of action shots, but I know people like them, so here you go. That feels gratifying, eh? Trimming out the... So we figure while we're painting, we may as well upgrade that light socket. And we don't really use, we're not gonna use this phone one anymore, so I thought, well, I'll try to find my, uh, my wire cutters to get that out. And then I start pulling and I'm like, oh, I guess I uh, don't need the wire cutters. And I think, well, let's try this one. <laughs> yeah. So those were just looking bad, not doing anything. That's better, eh? We, again, that paint is the same color, it's just wet, so it'll, it'll match up. Yeah, a couple outlets, a little cleaner. We're on the clock. Uh, my Uncle Glenn is coming to visit and also to work for a couple days uh, along with a couple of his friends and uh, very exciting. So this is gonna, he's gonna be the first one to stay in this room. And so we're pretty much done painting. Time to get on the floors, sweep, vacuum, and then mop and clear off any of the blips. I, I also had on the list to, to install one of these. Leslie says the brown one is the one that's gonna go on. This is of course going to hang over the bed and it's gonna have fabric, but we don't have the fabric yet, so it's gonna hang up there, and uh, and that'll be cool. But so she said, let's not install it for now. So that's too bad. I was excited about that, but you know, and also notice notice how they must have taken this wall out at some point, and uh, so it doesn't have a, a panel, but it doesn't matter because it's behind a bed, so uh, it's all gonna look good. Oh, let's take a look while we're at it. Remember the gashes in the wall? I mean, you can see it's not perfect, but not terrible, not terrible. And actually quite good here. You can't see those at all. Yeah, good, big, huge room, a eh? huge, huge room. I vacuumed and I've mopped and I thought this floor was gonna be cleaner than it is. So now we're gonna have to double down and get serious. I'll get the, we'll have to scrape some stuff off. I thought we kept it pretty dark, but apparently not. Apparently not. This is actually a pretty good floor, so. All right, floor looking much better. I got some, uh, whatever it is, cleaning oil, stain, I don't know, what, whatever it is, treatment stuff on it. 
Yeah, it looks good. We've been working on cleaning up and this little closet that's under the staircase. I've been really hoping I can get a whole bunch of weird things that have been out of there um, and make it into a bit of a mudroom for us because in the past, I'll just come around. Hey, Bingy. We've kind of just used this as sort of like a place to throw stuff when we walk in the door, which isn't my favorite. This was the reception desk when it was a hotel. A solid oak piece. We don't need it anymore, and I wish we could get rid of it. Um, so if anyone wants to buy it, you're more than welcome. It has a cool thing in the back with shelves and drawers and whatnot. Anyway, I digress. In there, there was like a ton, a ton of boxes of um, all sort of like auction pamphlets and magazines and all of that. And so whoever owned this at some point, they had a lot. This was 1989. Um, there were some others in the 80s and 90s. And um, they must have loved buying furniture for here. But there was also a couple of magazines. And the fun thing is I did try to go through everything just in case I found stuff. And I did find something. So whoever this was drew out different ideas for layouts of bedrooms and things like that. I haven't had time to totally look at this yet. Like, where is this? Looks like lattice work. I have no pergolas. Oh, I wish there had been pergolas. Wouldn't that have been great? Or maybe there was and we just don't know what. Oh, there's more. I haven't even seen this. Oh, interesting. So anyways, I really look forward to looking at some of this and seeing what they had come up with. They were fairly in depth on some of their ideas and some of it's kind of hard to read, but um, I think it's gonna be fun to see, and look, they were making a little um, coat of arms, which is cute. Anyway, super fun. So you never know what you're gonna find until you go through it all, because I would have just thrown it all away, but this is a pretty fun find. We've not had a lot of family come, and so it is uh, fun to have an uncle, Glenn, coming, and also their friends the next couple of days. Uh, of course, we had to do a fair amount of tidying since we're mid-projects, but I think we're ready to go. Isn't that nice? That light looks great. I'll come. I'll give you a quick walk walk through here. Oh, this room is so much better when you can see the whole thing in one shot. The camera has to pan, but uh, still looks great. And I love it when we have these doors open, particularly from the other side. But still, it's a good view. Mostly found some nice little flowers. Okay, I'm gonna come around. And we got this finally cleaned up. Oh my goodness. What a lot of work that's been. But uh, we're mostly ready. I haven't done the hallway yet here. But the room, and I'll stop to show you that. The room's looking good. Mostly went on the angle with the, I'll sit back, pan all the way up. Wallpapers in, floors painted, mirror reinstalled, bed is made, lights are functional, and I believe I will turn them on just to prove that point. <laughs> I'm gonna come around this way if I can. Mr. Bingley approves. Mr. Bingley approves. Uh, it's hard to get it. I'll see if I can zoom out here. Yeah, that distorts the image always, but. So this room is a whole lot cleaner than it used to be. And then of course the wonderful bathroom. This bathroom has been done too. This floor was an interesting choice. It, it uh, hasn't stayed as clean as we'd like. This kind of the ash concrete, whatever they are, concrete tiles, but, uh, but still not too bad. We gotta, I gotta close that door. And of course, this is a lovely bathroom. This is a lovely bathroom. And a good shower over there. Yeah. So here we go. It'll be a good stay. We got Now we have a good guest area. That's helpful. Don't you agree, Mr. Bingley? Yes, Mr. Bingley agrees. I had to get another shot of that. It looks so good. And also, you might want to see our... You also might want to see our, uh, our little china cabinet again. 
Yeah, nice and full. Isn't that great? We still need to get the light on. And there's a request. I had a request to have a nice close-up of our... There it is. There's the close-up on the uh, Griffray logo. For Daisy. So deep in the forest, way in there, I should have taken you actually, but aren't these lovely? Um, a double, a single, and then a bigger one. But guess what I just saw? So I thought I'd come over here to the other side. And I was like, oh, how cute are those, right? Nice little, little bells just blooming in purple and white. But then, guess what I saw? I'll show you in a minute. Look guys, the tree peonies bloomed. Ah! Isn't that great? How fun. Look how cute. So this year they bloomed. Last year did nothing. Look how lovely they are. How cute. Well, we may have to bring a couple of those in. See how they do. There's definitely a nice group here. That's all I see so far. <gasps> so fun. My work in the guest room is almost done. So it's start time to start looking at the next project. And as we walk around, maybe it's the changed new roof and all the water we had in the building, or maybe it's just the slow march of time, but we have a lot of roof issues up on the premier etage, the bedroom floor. So I'm gonna try to paint um, uh, four different bedrooms in the next month, at least the, the, uh, the ceiling, at least the trim. So we've got this one. Fortunately, the, the middle area is really nice here. I'll try to go slow, try to go slow. I know it's hard on the watching. Over on the guy's side, the trim is quite bad on both of these. There's also mold up there, so I'm gonna clean that up and we'll scrape it and we'll fill it and we'll prime it and we'll paint it. And then these rooms will look a lot nicer. Looks like the ceiling on this one could also stand some paint, but it's not desperate yet. So we'll see if we get to it. This is the landing up here on the Premier Etage. This has driven me nuts for a long time. I cannot wait to have that painted and filled. The girl's side as well has some areas. This was our big, huge leak for a long time. So this will need, uh, this will need done. And the main area too, not just the trim. And the ceilings in this room too have really taken a step backwards. Maybe there was water that got in here, I'm not sure, but it's uh, it's really gone downhill. So this one, the whole ceiling will need to be done. And the trim. My first job today is to take a load to the dump. Now, we have bought some vacuum cleaners over our time here and neither has fared particularly well. The shop vacs do a lot better, but this one we've particularly burned out, or actually this one. So I'm going to see if I can get it working. If I can't, we'll salvage any parts for the other one and then uh, take it to the dump. You know, not only is this van going to do the glorious work of hauling students around, but it also is great for simple things like taking a run to the deshettery, the garbage dump. We've got all kinds of stuff. Styrofoam from years of purchases. Up in the attic, the Deuxième Etage, and there's some good news and bad news. Good news is for the first time in probably a year, it's dry, pretty dry. Looks a little bit wet there, but in person it looks dry. Much drier, certainly. So that is good news, progress. The bad news is that this growing pile of sticks, this nest continues to grow. So somehow birds are dropping um, nest materials in here. I really need to get the ladder and get up there. And it's easy to say you really need to get up there, but then once you're here, there's just so many things you gotta do. You're always like, I don't know how, which to prioritize. So you gotta do one at a time, it seems. The 
project that needs our immediate attention is this downspout, the apocalypse downspout. So I brought up the camera. We're gonna stick the camera in there, see what we see, and then if I get the courage up, we're gonna go in the valley and take a look and see if we can scoop stuff out. Okay, so here's what the camera shows. It's a little bit tricky to understand what you're looking at, but as we get through here, you can see that the pipe is crushed a bit and also that it's full of junk. Mostly, uh, there's broken slate that has dammed everything up. So as you can see, it's completely clogged. Uh, that means we're gonna have to go out. So I got these nice big windows now, it's gonna be a lot easier. And, you know, unless I fall through, there's no real way to get hurt other than if I fall through. So I should be okay. I uh, wish I was about 100 pounds lighter or 150 pounds lighter, but <laughs> take what you get. I do have a rope to help me pull back in and I can call Leslie if I'm in trouble. So here we go. I should have done this a long time ago. This is so cool. So there's a little basin, which is smart. And then it catches some of the debris before the water goes down. So that's clever. Um, I'm coming up. You can see I'll go way up. Big, beautiful chimney. Looking great, by the way, that chimney. And then uh, looking good, too, there. And here's where we came from. So no problems. So it's actually easier than I thought. You know, in life, how it is. Sometimes you're just scared to try until you do it. There's the Starlink. So I got this nice rope that's going to help me get back up. So far, I don't see any problems. I'll take a good look for leaks, too, while I'm out here. Take a look. This is cool too. Look, it looks like one block block has slipped and it slipped a long ways down, but not all the way out. Okay, so here we're looking and we've put the camera down the pipe from the top. And again, a little difficult to figure out what you're seeing. Kind of looks like a horror movie, doesn't it? You're like you don't know what's gonna jump out at you and you're, what you're gonna find. And uh, as we get in there, I started to notice this unusual package and I'm like, it looks like it's square and it looks like something in there now again this is not completely the problem there are broken tiles that created a dam and then there's a bunch of other junk but i got real curious i'm like what is this thing so i kept trying to go in and out and get close and i think i get a pretty good look at it here in fact you can almost read it i'm like what is clogging up this downspout um couldn't quite figure it out but the good news is i could figure out that it was clogged and also it's not very long really good news Knowledge is power. Okay, so we've learned a bunch of things. I went up to the top and I think, I think where I was, I think it's just like about a foot past this. So it's not really long, that's really good news. And I also noticed that what they did is they cut off the top of this side so it'd be easier uh, for to clear jams, which makes total sense. You don't need the top covered. So I think I'm gonna do that on this one too. So I cut her open, and I suppose that looks a little uh, a little rough on the video here. It's actually lead, and it's super smooth. Uh, and then we were able to get the camera up and take a better look at what we had, and I was able to start to get a, a bit of a garden implement in there to start pulling stuff out. You can see we've made some progress here already. There's definitely less stuff. And that would be the culprit. Somebody smoking. Uh, you know, I kept pushing and kept pulling stuff out. And then eventually we could see daylight on the other side. So we knew we'd succeeded. The water will get through. It'll wash the rest of that stuff out and uh, success. Next job is not to fix that. That's gonna be tricky. Again, when you can't really go into the stone because it crumbles. And then you don't want huge pieces of stone falling down either, right? But I can fix this missing piece of glass. It, of course, it fits in perfectly. So we'll just cock that up and pop her in and at least there's one more less place for rain to get in. That literally took three or four minutes. I mean, again, you're not real worried about what it looks like at this point, but uh, we got a window in, less water's going in, a good move. You know what we're gonna do temporarily for this? We're gonna, we're gonna go up there with the big ladder we're gonna put that big board in there and then we're just gonna run, we're just gonna run a board from there straight across to the other side and wedge it in relatively tight. And it just the pressure, it's not gonna look great, but the board's gonna go right across and it's just gonna push it in and then we'll be fine. As long as it's not pushing too hard, uh, push the stones out. 
But no, just nice and snug. Then it can't go anywhere. That's that's probably the, the smart way to do it for now. Temporary fix. It's uh, great to have family. And I want to tell you a little bit of a family story. Uh, story Sunday. Well, not really, but a little bit. Um, when we first started thinking about buying a chateau, it's kind of a crazy idea. And so we talked to some of our friends, some of my colleagues, and people uh, that knew us got really excited really quick. They were like, you guys could totally do this. And and they were excited and they're like, go for it. Um, we talked to our kids. They were excited about it, I think. Um, someday, someday, uh, uh, we're going to play a song that Amy wrote. Uh, she played it for me the other, uh, like a few months ago. And it, it's absolutely heartbreaking. It was a song basically talking about her last time in her house that she grew up in. And so, um, oh man, you guys, it is so good. I'm like, this hurts. And it's beautiful and also it could make you famous amy <laughs> but it's a beautiful song like it's like a taylor swift quality i think of course i'm her dad i think she's amazing but it, it's pretty cool someday she'll record it uh, and we'll, we'll put it on the channel for sure too but anyways uh, folks were really encouraging to us a lot of our friends uh and and since my parents were killed about 30 years ago i've been an orphan a long time and we've been out with, without leslie's parents for a long time too so we've been kind of on our own and that's not a fun way to go through life because you don't have the, you, what you lose is the beautiful wisdom of the generation before. They see things that you don't and they know you and they care about you and so they have a unique perspective. And we've lived without that for decades and it's sad. It's really sad. I, we miss our parents. Um, but uh, as luck would have it, as we were getting ready to buy the chateau, one of my uncle and aunts were having a birthday party not too far away, I think five hours away. And so we drove to go there and all the uncles and aunts were going to be there. And so we were like, oh, this is so fun. We haven't seen family forever. And so we thought, hey, let's tell them about this chateau idea and see what everybody thinks. Uh, and they're really, I have some great, this was on the Hildebrand side, my, my uh, dad's uh, family. And they're wonderful people and they're very wise and they're accomplished and they're, they're good folks. And, and so we started telling them and we were pretty excited about it. And some of the younger cousins and nephews were excited about it. And I'm looking out at the room and I'm like, I'm trying to read the room and I'm like, ooh. Ooh, it's a cautious bunch and, and and at the end you know they started asking hard questions kind of like you know you guys are a little bit older you're not young anymore you're over 50 your energy is just going to go downhill this is a lot of work and uh they talked a little bit about the financial risk of the whole thing and and what surprised me is they were not all in you know in fact most of them were cautious cautiously hesitant and, and advising us the same and so i thought about that i took that very seriously because obviously you want, you don't want to disregard the wisdom of of your elders and, and in a lot of ways, it, it made sense to me because, um, you know, these guys have known me as a kid and also as an orphan, right? I'm the little boy whose parents were killed and was all alone in the world. And so, you know, on some level, they you always see someone maybe as a little bit of a kid and they haven't maybe seen everything that we've done in life. But also their the family cares about you more. Like they're thinking, what if this goes badly? What, what are you guys going to be on the street? Who's going to care for you? You don't have parents. And so they're thinking about things like that. And I appreciate that. The beautiful thing about family is sometimes family will tell you the truth when friends tell you what you want to hear. Do you know what I mean? Family loves you enough to tell you the hard truth when you need to hear it. And that's what they were telling us. Now, ultimately, we did decide to go ahead and they didn't, nobody forbade us or anything like that, but they just gave us really good critical comments to consider. And so we went in with our eyes open. Now, uh, of all the couples, the one that was most um, positive about the idea were our uncle and aunt, Glenn and Joanne on the Hildebrand side, lots of uh, good encouraging fullers as well. Um, and so Uncle Glenn's the one who's here, he's chainsawing uh, this week. And so we appreciated that f from the front. And all the other uncles and aunts are fantastic, don't get me wrong. But it was nice that uh, Uncle Glenn and Aunt Joanne were kind of from day one, like you should do this, you should go for it. And so it's fun for them to come see uh, see this whole thing in action. Uh, it's good to have family. If you have family, by the way, I'll get all preachy. Here's, uh, here's, here's Rob the teacher, here's the old pastor that you know, doesn't have a pastor job anymore, so he still wants to preach. If you have family, man, don't don't lose them. You know, write them a letter, make a phone call. Someday they're going to be gone. You're going to be alone. That's no fun. You know, if there's a if there's a conflict, if there's a fight, put it under the bridge. Forgive. You want to have people in your life. You want people in your kid's life. You want that wisdom. So uh, that there's my two cents. Here's the two cents from this orphan, this this guy who would love to talk to his parents would love to get his parents perspective on stuff i can't and maybe you can and if you can do it and if it's too late you know i guess you, you start over and you find someone else that you can share with okay thanks for thanks for staying with me on this 
So we're super tired today and we just broke down and went out for dinner. How do you like that? But this is great. I got a wrap, I believe it's salmon, a little salad in there. And then Leslie has, we just ordered one of each. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what this one's called, but she's a little bit worried about allergies with that. So we might switch, but it does look good. And then of course bread, yay. We went with the poisson, the fish there, and, uh, and then I got the babette, nice small little babette, but we'll, we'll enjoy it. Some frites, frites, yum. I think it's chocolate. Chocolate creme brulee, we can have a chocolate creme brulee today. I just, the obligatory camera shot, I gotta shoot it. There we go, thank you. And then hey, Leslie's got some tiramisu, that looks good too. Mm. Flaming hot. I don't know what to do with this chocolate tiramisu. How's it gonna be? I can't. I can't touch it yet, though. What's up? I'm gonna like that. Ooh, let's see. A, let's see a bite. You wanna see a bite? Let's see a bite. Get some more. Oh, that does look good. Mmm. Dessert. That was a good lunch. That was a good dinner. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Way to go, friends. <laughs> It is chocolate and it tastes great. Do you want to try this? Yes, I do want to try that. Thanks for coming along with us, you guys. Uh, Mr. Bingley and I say uh, have a good night. Leslie's in her room catching up probably on some wedding prep with Amy. If if I know uh, what, what Leslie's up to, she's still probably working. Uh, we hope you have some good rest on this Sunday and we hope we're going to get some good rest and lots more to come. I think we've got about 37 days till the students arrive, 37 days. Chateau's coming together. Next week, I'm starting on a bunch of ceilings. We're gonna fix ceilings in the main floor. So uh, lots of excitement. Thanks for coming along with us. And thanks for being part of our journey with your uh, positive comments on the, on the feed. And as many YouTube channels uh, say, please like and subscribe. It helps us with the analytics and folks watching that supports what we do. Thank you very much. We'll see you later.